Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So you might have noticed that my background looks a little bit different today, or you might not have noticed, I don't know, it does look quite similar to what it was before, but I've been wanting to change up my background for a while now just because I wanted something that was a bit more like Disney Channel based instead of just like the Disney movies because I don't really even talk about the Disney movies that often on my channel. But don't worry, in case you're wondering, they are on my closet door so I can still switch back and forth to my old background and my new background based on my mood, you know, if I'm feeling Disney Channel and Barbie and... I got some Nickelodeon, I think, on here too, and uh, then Go is on here. I don't know why I'm acting like I don't know when I'm the one who spent three hours like putting all this on my wall. But yeah, I just wanted a bit more variety, and so here we are. And so for those of you who might not have known, my old background was just photos from a Disney daily calendar, and so I thought that I would do that again, except for this time I made it myself. And so that does mean I have a lot of photos left over, because I only have about a hundred of them on this wall. And so I thought it'd be really cool to get these out to you guys in some way, like, I don't know, I was thinking maybe I start a Patreon and everyone that joins will get one, and I could like sign the back or something. I don't know, I thought it'd be cool to like give them back to you guys, because then it's like you have a piece of the wall. And so yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. But enough about that, we're talking about ships today, surprise, surprise, and we're talking about a trope that nobody requested except for me. I love this trope and so I'm really excited to talk about it today. And that is the forbidden lovers trope. So kind of like your Romeo and Juliet sort of thing. Also bonus points from me if they have like a secret relationship for a bit where they date in secret that is just top tier forbidden lovers. But before we jump right into it today, this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a virtual private network service that protects you and all of your data when you are online. Basically, whenever you're connected to an unencrypted internet network, this means that countless pieces of your information is being sent out into the digital world where it can be seen and intercepted on by other parties. But if you're using ExpressVPN, it creates this secure tunnel between your device and the internet to stop this information from getting out. Even when you're at home connected to your own Wi-Fi, this still means that your internet service provider has access to all of the sites you visit, even when you're in incognito mode, and they're legally allowed to sell this information to advertisers. And so this is why I personally have been using ExpressVPN for years, but I've also been using it to access international Disney Channel content. I oftentimes get asked how I watch all of these international shows, and this would be how. So let's just say I want to watch Penny on Mars, which I oftentimes do, but unfortunately it's not available to stream anywhere in North America, well ExpressVPN's got me covered. They've got servers all around the world so I can just switch my server location to France and then bam I've got all three seasons of Penny on Mars right at my fingertips. It also works with Netflix too. There's this really great show called Callie's Mashup which I'm sure you've heard me talk about before. It's basically like a Nickelodeon telenovela. You can see it on my wall. There it is. <laughs> but unfortunately just like with Penny on Mars it's not available to stream anywhere in North America but with ExpressVPN I can just switch my server location to Brazil and then you're good to go. So to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free, just go to expressvpn.com slash Disney, or you can click the link in the description down below. So that's expressvpn.com slash Disney. Um, thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Like I said, I've been using them for years now, so it's really cool to have them as a sponsor. Also, thank you to you guys for checking out ExpressVPN as it does really help out the channel a lot. All right, so with all that being said, let's jump right into these forbidden love stories. Are you guys ready? <laughs> I know I am, so let's go. Number 10, I wonder who it could be. Uh, do you want to see something really stupid? I was goofing around and I accidentally sort of wrote your name on my hand, but used permanent ink by mistake. No one's ever written my name on their hand before. Really more my wrist. <laughs> Dana. Yeah? Dana! Oh, it's my dad. I, I'm so sorry. I, I'm not supposed to be talking to you. Hurry, go. So at number 10, we have Nate and Dana from Camp Rock 2, and they are one of the first ships that came to mind for me because the whole movie is very, like, us versus them with the whole, like, Camp Rock versus Camp Star thing. I wouldn't say that they are one of my favorite ships. Like, I remember really liking them when I was a kid, but now I just find them a little bit odd. Like, with Nate constantly watching her from afar with his binoculars and her writing his name on her wrist, like, I get it, they're supposed to be kids and kids do, like, weird stuff like that, but it just still comes across as weird to me. Maybe it's because the actors are playing characters that are a lot younger than them. But you know what? This ship gave us introducing me, so I honestly can't complain. Now it has been a hot minute since I've rewatched Camp Rock 2, but I feel like this ship in particular isn't really that secretive. Like I feel like Nate doesn't really try to keep it a secret from his friends, like it's mainly just a thing because her dad wouldn't allow it. But I feel like he does come around at the end, maybe? I don't remember. Oh wait, no, she comes at the end. She comes to Camp Rock at the end, so he must come around, or she just dips. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. But either way, they're a solid forbidden love story, and so that's why they are number 10. So you've been thinking about me. Let's pick it up from there. I can't stop thinking about you. Have you been thinking about me? Kinda. Yesterday I watched a documentary about mosquitoes. Did you know they mate for life? It's only 10 days, but it's so romantic. I'm Jake. I'm Lindy. Now get out of here. What? My friends could show up any minute. I have to see you again. We could meet later at the juice bar on my side of town. Jumble juice? Then your friends will see me. 
It has to be in neutral territory. How about Lincoln Park Zoo, 4 o'clock? See you there. Next up, we have Lindy and Jake from I Didn't Do It, and I'm so happy that I'm finally getting a chance to talk about these two because they're definitely my second favorite ship from the show. I even included them on my wall. Here they are, Lindy and Jake. I love them. <laughs> The main reason why they are farther back on this list is because they unfortunately only last one episode. If you don't remember, they're basically rivals because of their school's basketball teams, I believe. Like anyone from Lindy's school is forbidden from hanging out with anyone from Jake's school because they were seen as like the enemy. And so they're kind of like enemies to lovers as well. Did I mention them my enemies to lovers video? I might have. But yeah, basically they meet at this one basketball game because they're both yelling at each other and then they start secretly dating. And then unfortunately he breaks up with her at the end of this episode because he meets someone else, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. And so on one hand, I'm happy that they do conclude their story in one episode and so I'm not just left wondering what happened to them as the show went on. But then on the other hand, I'm sad because they were really cute from like the five seconds that we actually saw them together. And so yeah, that's Lindy and Jake. I do love them. I just wish that we could have gotten more. And so that's why they are number nine. ¿Sabes qué tuve que hacer hoy? Adivinar, mentirle a Violeta otra vez y ocultarle que nos habíamos visto. Horrible. Bueno, bueno. Estoy harta de mentirle a mi mejor amiga, Diego. Bueno, tranquilízate un poco, Francesca. Ya va a llegar el momento ideal para decírselo. ¿Y si no llega? Que sí que va a llegar. Lo primero que tienes que hacer es dejar de angustiarte. Bueno. ¿Sabes qué quiero? ¿Qué? Poder salir con vos. Normalmente, como la gente normal, tener una cita normal, sin estar todo el tiempo preocupado por si nos están viendo o no. Una cita romántica quiero, okay. eso. Ok, hagámoslo. ¿Eh? Que sí, hagámoslo. ¿Cómo? Vamos a tener toda la normalidad que tú quieras, en un lugar donde los chicos no nos vean, ¿vale? ¿Vos decís? Sí. Señorita Francesca, dame la mano. Sí. ¿De verdad? Vale. Venga. ¿Tiene algún plan para esta noche? <risa> Salir con usted. Ah, muy bien. Okay, so at number eight, we have Francesca and Diego from Violetta, and this is one ship that I get asked about a lot because they are one of the more popular ships from the show, and I understand why. They do have a really interesting story in the third season. Basically, they start to grow closer during season three, and then they start dating, but decide to keep it a secret because each of the other person's best friend is the other person's ex. So, like, Diego's best friend is Marco, who is Francesca's ex, and then Francesca's best friend is Violetta, who is Diego's ex. Does that make sense? <laughs> But then Marco leaves to go on tour, I think, and so then he's kind of out of the picture, but then they still decide to keep it a secret from Violetta for like way too long. The whole secret thing is actually one of the main reasons why they're not one of my favorite ships, just because watching them run around all the time got really annoying for me. And like, I know it's a telenovela, so it's like in its format to drag stuff on, but that still didn't mean it made it any less annoying. And it was also like one of those cases where it was like, the person isn't going to be mad about the thing that you think that they're going to be mad about, if you get me. Like, they just kept saying that they didn't want to tell Violetta because they were worried that it would hurt her, whereas I was just like, she moved on. She could probably care less about you guys. Like, she's just gonna be more upset that you guys have been keeping it a secret for this long, and then that's exactly what happened. But I will say that besides that, we did get some really interesting storylines from Francesca and Diego throughout the third season, and they did have some pretty good chemistry. I really liked how Diego knew that Fran was Fausto right away, like it shows how even they're superior to Leon and Violetta, or maybe Diego's just smarter than Leon, I don't know. And yeah, they were entertaining in my opinion. I wouldn't say that I like them as much as I like Diego and Violetta, but I would say that I like them more than Marco and Francesca, but that's probably just because I found Marco and Fran to be a little bit boring. Uh, but yeah, I do still kind of find Fran and Diego just to be a bit odd, but I still like them and so that's why I included them. I just miss Todd so much. I mean, sometimes, it's like I can hear his voice. <laughs> it's Todd with a bullhorn. <gasps> what song? What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and London is the sun. Oh, he's quoting Shakespeare. I thought Shakespeare was your friend. <laughs> he's a writer. Romeo and Juliet. In a poetic way, Todd's saying that he loves you. Oh, oh, okay. Tell me how to say I love you too in Shakespeare talk. <clears throat> my bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. Got it. I love you too, sweet cheeks. All right, so we got another ship that unfortunately only lasted one episode, and that is London and Todd from The Sweet Life. And I must say, The Sweet Life was very good at giving us ships that would only last for one episode because there was a lot of them, especially in regards to London and Maddie, probably because they were older than Zack and Cody. But I completely forgot about London and Todd until I rewatched this episode, and I must say they were pretty cute together. Basically, Todd was in town for this dentist convention that was happening at the Tipton, and so that's how he meets London, and they have this like love at first sight sort of moment. But then we find out that Todd is the son of this guy who owns like another hotel chain who's like the main competitor to the Tipton, and so London and Todd are forbidden from seeing each other. And so then this result 
adults in numerous scenes where they're just sneaking around together and being cute. They even kiss twice in this episode, which just seems so taboo for today's American Disney Channel shows. And while their love story only lasts like one episode, I still feel like it was done really well. Like it even got a decent conclusion with Todd's dad being like, okay, I'll let you go live out your dream and be a dentist. You can go to dentist school. And he's like, no, because I know you're only doing this that I won't be with London. And he's like, I'm staying here. And then London's like, no, I'm not gonna let you give up on your dream for me. Go, be a dentist. I'll see you in seven years. And you know what? Now that I'm reminded that this ship exists, I do think that they end up together. In seven years, London and Todd are together and in love, and I'm happy for them. And so that's London and Todd. Let's move on to number six. <laughs> you think she's onto us? Who, Stella? No, the kid. She gave us a weird look when you opened the door. So? We agreed to keep us a secret. What if she spills it? What if she does? Well, then we obviously wouldn't be a secret couple anymore. Okay, sounds good to me. What? Nick, do you have any idea how hard it is for a girl not to tell her best friend about her super secret boyfriend? No. I'll just say this. It's never been done. I'm sorry. It's hard for me, too. We don't want to end up like Joe and Stella. Everybody talking about the relationship before it was even a relationship. They never had a chance. I know, but... Please, just be patient with me. Fine. Thank you. But I don't like it. So it turns out Nick Jonas is just the king of forbidden love stories on Disney Channel because here he is again with Nick and Macy from Jonas. Now this ship is an interesting one for me because it was one of my favorite ones as a kid but then when I rewatched Jonas LA recently I didn't really like them as much like I found them to be a little bit annoying and for some reason I thought that their secret relationship lasted for longer than it did. It only lasted for one episode which just blew my mind but it also made me really happy because Nick's reason for wanting to have their relationship be a secret was like really dumb in my opinion. Like I couldn't even remember why Nick wanted to keep their relationship a secret until I rewatched that scene and and I was just like, Nick, <laughs> come on, that's really dumb. Like, Joe and Stella are completely different people to you and Macy. Like, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I might be clouded by nostalgia, but I do still think that Nick and Macy are pretty cute. Like, just the fact that she used to be a fan of him, and then when she calms down and starts to, like, be herself around him, then he starts having feelings for her, and then they get together, and they're in love. Like, that's just so adorable. I don't know how much of their relationship was actually really forbidden, besides maybe, like, Stella's aunt being like, you guys aren't allowed to date any rock stars. Um, but it was still a really good episode and how they, like, are sneaking around together and being in love. It also resulted in one of the best songs from the second season like when he comes out and sings your biggest fan to her with China's little like vocal harmonies Like it's just so cute and I love it so much. And so that's why I have Nick and Macy as number six Hey Ciao Mi è sempre piaciuto venire a scuola Ma un'accoglienza del genere non l'ho mai ricevuta Sarà meglio che ti ci abitui Eh, è un peccato non poterci far vedere gli altri insieme Lo so, se Linda ci vede insieme ci fa deportare in... Qual è un posto zero cool? Ah, sì, il tuo armadio. <ride> Prima o poi anch'io capirò le misteriose leggi della moda. E comunque anche i miei amici la prenderebbero molto male se sapessero di noi due. Loro non ti conoscono come ti conosco io. Nessuno mi conosce come mi conosci tu. Nemmeno io. Non avrei mai pensato di poter prendere una sufficienza in matematica o di comporre una canzone. Io non avrei mai pensato di poter ballare. E infatti non lo so fare. Oh, piantala, e invece sei migliorato un sacco. Vedrai che stasera la diretta stupirai tutti. Intanto ho stupito te. E questo mi basta. So I think that this might be the first time that Alex and Co. has actually earned a spot on one of my lists and not just as an honorable mention. And so good job, guys. Round of applause. <laughs> I've mentioned this before, but Sam and Rebecca are definitely one of my favorite ships from the show, along with Emma and Christian. They both just have top tier story arcs, in my opinion. If you haven't seen the show, first of all, you should. It's on Disney Plus in the UK, so use my ExpressVPN link and go watch Alex and Co. But basically, there's these two musical groups. One is the Lindas, the other is Alex and Co. Rebecca is part of the Lindas, which is like the Mean Girls music group, and Sam is a part of Alex and Co., which is like the good guys, the one that we root for. And so they get together after Sam starts tutoring Rebecca, and then they fall in love, and it's just so cute. And as you saw from the clip, they do date in secret for a bit, but then they're friends do find out quite quickly but they still do have a great scene near the end of the season where he kisses her in front of everybody and it's just everything i love them they're so freaking adorable <laughs> we don't need to talk about the third season because season three ruined both my favorite ships and that just makes me sad uh, but yeah sam and rebecca were cute while they lasted and i love them a lot and so that's why they're number five i think are we at number five yes <laughs> let's move on well, wait, wait a minute if chad is not really here because he's sunny's brother then what is he doing here? Ah, good one, Nico. You want me to tell them? No, 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 no. Um, I'll tell them. Because I am not ashamed and I have nothing to hide. That's my girl. I am... 
Judging Chad's celebrity tennis tournament, duh! Oh. 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 Tournament. I'll give you the details tomorrow night. What's tomorrow night? Our well, first date. See ya. So yes, I am aware that I included Sonny and Chad on my enemies to lovers list, but guess what? They also had a secret relationship at one point, and so they're on this list as well. I just feel like they were a good forbidden love story as well. You know, they came from opposite competing shows. The cast were rivals to one another, and their friend groups would not be happy to find out that they were a thing. Although I feel like Chad didn't really care much about that. It was definitely more Sonny that didn't want her friends to find out. But I guess that makes sense, because I don't really think that Chad was ever really that close with his cast members. Maybe we just didn't see much of that. I don't know. It was definitely more Sonny that was worried about it getting out than Chad was, I feel like. But that's why the ending to this story arc was just perfect, how she invited the randoms over to see her and Chad on her date. It just goes to show that she was accepting her feelings and not worried about what they might think, and I just love that. Similar to some of the other ships on this list, their secret love story didn't really last for that long. Like, I feel like it was about two episodes altogether, but still the scenes we got with Sunny, Chad, and the randoms all together were just so hilarious that I could not have them be this high up on this list. You know, you're not how I expected vampires to be. Well, that's because my parents wanted me to fit in better and gave me a soul. I have feelings. And what do your feelings tell you? That we should do this again. <gasps> but <sighs> your parents don't like me. And my parents wouldn't like it if they knew I was going out with the competitor's daughter. You know what? I'm sorry. I don't care what mommy and dad have to say about this. I am going to tell them about you. You know what? I'm going to tell my parents, too. Then maybe we can have a date that lasts longer than my 25 minute break from work. No, oh, it was fun. I mean, I've never gone to the movies just to see the coming attractions before. <laughs> Although we probably could have gotten a smaller popcorn. Hey, the fun part was you. So of course, Justin and Juliet were another one of the first ships that came to mind for me when it came to forbidden love stories. Like, hello, Romeo and Juliet, Russo and Juliet. Like, that was not a coincidence. And although their forbidden love story only lasted like two or three episodes, it was still one of the most iconic ones to come from American Disney Channel. As I'm sure you guys already know, Justin and Juliet are my favorite ship from Wizards. I've talked about this before, but I just felt like they were constantly overshadowed by Alex and Mason, which just makes me sad because they were just such a better ship and just way less toxic. If you need a refresher, basically their parents owned competing sub shops, and so they hated one another. And then just to complicate things further he was a wizard she was a vampire and so the cards were just stacked against them but they made it through because their love was just so strong and also because the russos are great and so they came around eventually and then this is unrelated but can i just say that alex and max are everything in these few episodes like max his impressions and alex trying to send him away to this underwater seahorse riding camp like the Wizards vs. Vampire episodes are just so good. Some of my favorite ones from the series. And then Justin and Juliet are just like the little cherry on top. And so I love them. They're great. And so that's why they are number three on this list. Ah, the perfect picnic spot. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't sit with you at lunch. I wanted to. It's just everyone I was... Someday, maybe. So first of all, I just wanted to apologize for using such a short clip for Zed and Addison, but it was honestly the best one I could find from the movie that showcased how they liked each other, but they were worried about what others might think, besides using the entirety of Someday, which I obviously couldn't do. But Zed and Addison are probably one of my favorite decom ships. I just feel like they had a really good relationship progression and just story arc, and just they have really great conversation skills, which I love to see. And even though I don't think that the first Zombies is that great of a movie, I still love them and their story arc throughout it. You know, they meet, she punches him in the face, and the rest is history. So obviously they were forbidden lovers because he's a zombie, Zombie and she's a human but the real problem was everybody else which is how the story usually goes like they don't want her on the cheer squad if she's associating herself with zombies and Zed specifically and then Zed's friends aren't too kind to Addison either actually it's really just Eliza's the one who isn't really too kind to Addison at first and then also Addison's parents aren't too happy about the idea of her dating a zombie either and so it just creates a lot of problems for them but they make it through I just love how they both basically do whatever they can just to spend some time together it's just so adorable and just very true to like a new relationship you know Zed and Addison just make me really happy 
and I feel like they are one of the more iconic Disney Channel ships and so that's why I just had to have them at number two. But before I move on to number one, I do have a few honorable mentions so I'll go over those first. I actually have quite more than a few so I'll try to make it quick. First of all, we have the two kids from Secrets of Sulphur Springs, which is the new Disney Channel show that's airing right now, which I highly recommend. I haven't missed an episode since it started airing. It was actually through watching the show that gave me the idea for this video because the main characters are kind of hinted at as being like kind of forbidden lovers and also kind of like friends to lovers. And the only reason why they are only an honorable mention on this list is just because the first season hasn't ended yet. And so I don't actually know if they are going to get together or not, but I mean, I assume that they will, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And then we of course have Ben and Danielle from The Lodge. I don't know how like forbidden they were, but they definitely had like a moment where they were keeping their relationship a secret from everybody else and also kind of from us like we never actually got to see them get together which made me sad but yeah honorable mention for them too because why not and then i'm not too sure if they really count but tanner and layla from teen beach are like supposed to be forbidden lovers we just never really get to see how their story like actually plays out in the movie because like Brady and Mac kind of ruin things, but they still get an honorable mention as far as I'm concerned. And then also Emma and Caleb from Jesse. They were only a thing in like a few episodes, but they're probably my favorite ship from Jesse. But I feel like that just goes to show how much I really didn't care for any of the ships in Jesse. Also, Lily and Oliver kept their relationship a secret from Miley for like five seconds. And also Casey and Brett. I feel like they count. Like, I feel like it was kind of a complicated situation that they were in, but they were definitely forbidden. Like, Brett was on the dark side and Casey was on with the good guys. So yeah, they should get an honorable mention. Maybe they should have been on this list. I don't know. <laughs> honorable mention, at least. Sure, why not? And then this one I'm really not sure about, but Troy and Gabriella, I feel like, are a little bit forbidden lovers. Like, their friends definitely tried to keep them apart. But then I'm also like, it was kind of more about the music, right? And then also like, does Simon and Amber kind of count because of season three with her being on the Red Sharks and him being with the Jam and Roller team? I feel like there was some forbiddenness in there. They just didn't really try that hard to keep it a secret. <laughs> uh, but that's all my honorable mentions. And so let's move on to my number one ship. Mis papás. No quieren que nos veamos más. ¿Cómo lo sabes? Mira, eso da igual. Lo importante es lo que tú pienses. ¿Quieres que sigamos juntos? Para mí es imposible estar alejada de vos, por más que lo intente. Siento que tenemos una conexión muy fuerte. Yo también siento lo mismo. Lo sentí cuando cantamos juntos en el jukebox y... Lo siento cada vez que te veo. Cada vez que hablamos. Cada vez que te tengo cerca. Es... Inevitable. Exacto, inevitable. Pero ¿cómo vamos a estar juntos si nuestras familias solo quieren separarnos? ¿Te acuerdas de lo que te dije en la Cyberhold? Que arriesgarías todo por estar un solo minuto conmigo. No, pues lo sigo pensando. Ahora y siempre. Yo también. Ojalá pudiéramos escaparnos, meternos en una burbuja, volvernos invisibles, no sé. Bueno, podemos hacer eso. Volvernos invisibles. Ajá. Si nuestras familias no quieren que nos veamos, veámonos en secreto. ¿Me estás proponiendo que tengamos un romance clandestino, Manuel? Si tú quieres. ¿Qué me dices, Vía Orquiza? ¿Te gustaría vivir este amor inevitable en secreto conmigo? So I'm sure to nobody's surprise, I have Bia and Manuel at number one. These two are just like the definition of forbidden love story as far as I'm concerned. And as you guys know, they are my second favorite Disney Channel ship of all time as far as the TV shows are concerned. And so I just had to have them at number one. If you haven't seen Bia, you are in for a treat. Bia and Manuel's story is a bit complicated, but I'll try my best to explain it without spoiling too much from the show. So first of all, you have Bia, who has an older sister named Elena, who used to be in this band called Moondust alongside her boyfriend Victor and his younger brother Lucas. So 10 years ago, their band had this gig in Brazil, which they were both forbidden from going to because it was too far away and they didn't want them driving all night but they go anyways because they're rebels but they shouldn't have went anyways because then they get in a car accident in which Lucas dies, Victor gets paralyzed so now he's in a wheelchair and Elena is nowhere to be found so she's presumed to be dead. So since Elena was the one that was driving when the accident happened Victor's family blames Elena's family for the accident that killed their son and left the other one paralyzed not caring about the fact that it also killed her as well or assumed uh, presumably killed her as well. So back to Bia and Manuel like I said Bia is Elena's sister and then Manuel 
well is Victor's cousin who is currently living with Victor's family and so his aunt and uncle are currently his guardians. And so Manuel is forbidden from seeing Bia because his family sucks and then originally Bia's parents were chill with her seeing Manuel because they trusted her judgment and they understood that he like wasn't the same as his aunt and uncle but then some stuff happened in season two and so they end up forbidding Bia from seeing Manuel as well and so it's just a big mess. But then that's what became their thing you know they talked about how their love was inevitable that nothing could keep them apart and they just turned into like one of the most beautiful love stories I've ever seen in my life and so that's why I have them as my number one forbidden love story ship and so that's Bia Manuel they're my number one. <laughs> Let me know down below which ship was your favorite on this list I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways Cater Tots that is all I've saved for today I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very very soon. So do we want a new wall tour? <laughs> Should we go over my favorite photos just because why not? Okay, I really like this one because Fran and Bilu and I think it's really cute. Oh, I also like this one. It's from the Proud family. You probably can't see it from where you guys are, but it says run for your life, which I think is funny. Also this one, Chad, hilarious. Oh, okay, this one might be my favorite one. <laughs> so it's from Go. It's Mia and Wanwa. So obviously I love it because they're my favorite ship. But I also love how Alvaro is just chilling in the background, <laughs> just like watching them from a window. That's funny. Of course, any of the Soy Luna ones I love because it's my favorite show. Um, oh, I love this one of Chiara and Guillermo from Bia, and this one of Carmi Lex, also from Bia. Oh, I love this one. I don't know what it's about her, but I love her so much. She's from Barbie um, Starlight Adventure. Honestly, I love them all. Like, I was having a lot of fun putting this wall together. I like this one a lot, too, and this one. Let me know down below which one's your favorite. <laughs>